Okay, so now we're going to talk about the scanner. Now, the scanner is very similar to the radar screen because they're in there are both scanners, but then there are, are some significant differences between the two. In the last segment, we talked about how the radar screen is really most useful for real-time uh, scanning, but there were some limitations with regard to how many symbols you could put on a radar screen. And that seemed to you know, generate somewhere around a thousand. Well, let's say you need to scan the entire market. You want to know what, and you're looking for specific criteria. That's where the scanner comes into play. And the scanner does not require an additional uh, fee to be enabled by default. It is just on. Okay. So to turn it on, you're next to the rate radar screen you're going to have this little lightning bolt that is the scanner window and yours will look a little bit different I have scanners scans already on mine so that's why you see all these okay so by default you should have this trade station and sample scans window the first time that you open it up if you don't you can just right click anywhere in the window and make sure that you have the view trade station and sample scans this is a really good place to start if you've never used the scanner before because it kind of gives you an idea of what it can do as well as you know how to get it set up and going just very quickly. So let's say that you know we just wanted to look for bearish engulfing candles. So to create a scan from the sample list here, all we're going to do is click and drag into our scans and then that creates it for us. Okay. And your default would have been the launch pad here. That's another way that you can start setting up. I'm going to close this window now so I can see. To uh, see what this is going on there, you can just double click on it. And then you might jump straight to the name. This is I highly recommend putting notes in here so you can keep your scans uh, straight as to what's going on. Because if, you, if you're like me, you'll create a few of these. And I have to go back and look in the scan criteria and try to figure out what it's doing as opposed to just make leaving yourself a quick note. This uh, is the, the scan universe. You can put a list in here if you want to, uh, if you want to create your own symbols, or you can do the entire uh, United U.S. stock market, or you can just do certain pieces like the NASDAQ or uh, the Amex. But all stocks seems to work pretty well if you're looking for specific setups. Uh, the scan criteria, this is where the meat is, and there's a lot here, so I want to make sure that we take time to cover it appropriately. So to add it, you, this is where you add server, both what would be considered server-side filters, and then you have your client-side filters, and there's a huge difference, and that difference is in the terms of speed. So anything down here is being done on your computer. If you're using an indicator or a paint bar or something else to create your filter, that's going to have to be calculated on your machine and that takes a lot of time. However, if you can, you should always try to filter it down from the server. So all of this information with regard to price or volume, and they've got other things as well. You can filter it down by sector. They got some financial information here for fundamentalists. So, you know, if you're looking for a certain book value or, or earnings per share or stuff like that, you can put all of that in here. Now, by default, it created some for us. Let's have a look at it. It's going to pull back and display the description or the name. The close is, is going to have to be between $10 and $50. The volume needs to be greater than 100,000 shares. And the market capitalization is greater than 1,000. And then we are looking at the candles that are bearish engulfing. By default, if we expand this, you can see that the interval is, is daily, but you can change this. You can change it to intraday or daily, weekly, or monthly. I don't think you can change this to, pre, to scan pre-market. And that's one of the big differences between this and the radar screen. So just be aware of that if you're but most of the time if you're looking at a pre-market you're going to be looking at radar screen anyway this is more for the the higher time frames or if you're looking to scan a much larger amount of markets than what the radar screen can handle 
and again this is enabled by default so this is definitely something that everybody can take advantage of so to run it there's a few different ways you can just click run here or you can highlight it and click run or you can just right click on it and click run and you can see that it just for the entire stock market there was 7900 indexes it's whittled those down already based on the server side criteria to uh, 1320 and so now it's applying the engulfing filter which is being done on the server to the remaining uh, 1300 indexes and this can take some time and you know this is best when you just kinda like go do something else and then come back to it okay so that scan has taken several minutes to finish and this is the result from looking for all of those bearish engulfing candles on the daily chart and you can see we have two columns again to combine it just click and drag one of them and then it will put everything into one column so what we can do now is we can shrink this down and then within the same workspace we're going to add a chart and then I can link the chart by going to the same symbol link and we will just make this a blue link for the symbol link then you can also link the interval if you have interval available to you and now when we click on the results of this scan it'll update our chart and let's make sure this chart is the right interval make it a daily chart and we'll go ahead and format the symbol make sure that we can see the candlesticks spread it out a little bit okay so one thing you want to notice is that the, the bearish engulfing is not the current day's candle that's currently being formed it's always the most recently closed candle so this one is still being formed this is the bearish engulfing candle that is talking about and we can just click on a different one and it'll update the screen here again there's your bearish engulfing yesterday today obviously uh, not getting confirmation here's another one so if you're looking like for specific candles or specific indi indi you know setups via indicators and you don't know which markets are firing this helps you narrow it down but there are a couple of gotchas that you really have to be aware of or you're gonna basically be in for a hard time and you're gonna be scratching your head wondering why certain scans aren't coming back when they should be the first thing that you want to do is double click on the scan to get to the scan criteria you have to make sure that when you're using on the server side data no no nothing needs to be changed but anything that's being done on the client side you have to be aware of this max number of bars to reference and load additional data this is similar to the radar screen where you have to override this data to make to have at least enough look back bars for what the calculation is, is doing otherwise you're not going to get uh, valid results or any results at all the other thing is this auto detect by default it's auto detect for the number of bars to reference but I have personally found that this causes problems I'm not sure why it does but it does and the best thing you can do is just match it always to the number of uh, the value of the load additional data just match it up and that for whatever reason taking that off the auto uh, really helps to make sure that you don't skip over 
certain things. There is another setting that you really have to change in order to make sure that you don't skip over uh, certain. And you have to go to View and Scanner Preferences and then Advanced. Okay. And by default, I think this is set to 30 seconds or a minute. And this is basically saying the amount of time that it will wait on the, the trade station network to re return results for an individual index. Sometimes it takes longer than that. Highly, highly recommend you just move this all the way up. Because if it takes longer than that, what will happen is if you go to the log here, you'll see things like this where unable to create... So it's skipping over uh, certain indexes when it does that, or, or it'll say something like, yeah, for you see the index here. So it, these timed out. And they probably timed out because we didn't have those settings uh, enabled here, where it was set to auto. Because we already had the preferences set to the max. But again, by default, they're not set up that high. You really need to change those two. I, it, this caused me a tremendous amount of frustration because when you miss a valid entry, you know, and, and then it takes off and you're looking for it specifically and it's just not returning the data, that's, that can be quite frustrating. So those, those are two things that will help you get better re result sets. The last part of the scanner is, you know, a lot of times people will have this set up to run uh, automatically so that you know the next day because these do take time the best time to run them is at night when you're sleeping especially if they're daily daily so what you can do you can double click on it and then go to the schedule and then you can set this to run daily or intraday just be aware that this takes time to run it also appears to be extremely resource intensive so if you have a slowdown it's probably because these are this is running. If you're running this at the same time that you're trying to look at charts, you'll notice your charts will be very, very slow to load. So this is, again, another reason to run it at a time when you're not going to be at the computer or looking at charts because it does take some, and that's why it's really best to just, just to schedule it. You can also I don't I don't see much value here. It'll it'll email you when it's completed. If you have a large organization and you want somebody to know that the it's been run, that, that's the only way I would turn that on. But otherwise, I don't need it. And then you can this is the archive. So when you do run it, what will happen is you'll have an archive of all of the the runs that this has created. So by going to the results, you can limit like the last 10 runs. Otherwise it'll, you know, it does take some space up on your drive. But by default it saves everything and lets you decide what to keep and what not to keep. So that's pretty much everything that goes with the radar screen. Again, the biggest value of the scanner is that it allows you to scan pretty much everything that's in the market where the radar screen does not allow you to do that. It has limitations. And this is really good for the overnight or weekly. You can do different intervals. You can even mix different intervals on your scan, which is something you cannot do on the radar screen. So I could I could be, you know, set up a fractal scan this way. And the way that you do that is again when you get into the scan criteria and you're looking at your client side, the interval is one of the pieces so I could I could do a bearish engulfing on on that and then I could go back down and look for a bearish engulfing candle and then set this interval to like a 60 minute chart. And then if I ran that, it would only pull back results where yesterday's candle was a bearish engulfing and then the last bar on the 60 minute chart was also a bearish engulfing. So that's just a quick way of how you would set up a fractal scan. Really valuable tool to be able to do it that way. And that pretty much covers everything there. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know.